Hello, comrades, and welcome back to Shanka Show. Здравствуйте, дорогие товарищи. My name is Sergey, and I was born in the USSR. Меня зовут Сергей, я родился в Советском Союзе. My special thanks и огромное спасибо to all my supporters on Patreon.com. Thank you, comrades. It's greatly appreciated. Today we are returning to the topic of handicapped people in the Soviet Union, and specifically handicapped veterans of the Great Patriotic War. Today's video may upset uh, quite a few people, especially the ones that uh, like to live in their tanks. But we need to talk about it, uh, so let's get going. But before we start, we need to do a little like a warm-up, because this is a pretty heavy topic. So uh, let's talk about a couple uh, events and a couple details that we need to know before we start uh, talking about the fate of the handicapped people who came back from the World War II. So if I ask you a question, what is the largest country in the world? You better tell me that's Russia. And that's correct. Russia is the biggest country in the world. It occupies 6.6 million square miles. So even after losing 14 republics in 1991 and Alaska earlier on, Russia still is the largest country in the world, almost twice bigger than the uh, next country, Canada, with 3.85 million square miles. So, of course, before 1991, Soviet Union was the biggest country in the world, and it was about 8.65 million square miles. So, huge territory, right? But remember what Shrek said in the movie Shrek when they saw that castle? Sure, it's big, but look at the location. And that's exactly the problem with the Soviet Union and Russia right now. Sure, it's big, but look at the location. Similar to Canada, Russia, and before that, Soviet Union, most of its territory is so much up north that it's really not habitable for humans. I mean, there is a small town next to the hole in the ground where you dig some minerals. Otherwise, it's not really a good place to live. And I'm sorry I have to drag you through this geography lesson, but I think it's very important to have this perspective big picture because it will help you to understand what I'm going to talk to you about next. So please bear with me. So similar to Canada, big but look at the location Soviet Union starts where the United States stops. So pretty much like southwest Michigan where I live is is same parallel as the Crimean Peninsula in the Soviet Union. So when I tell my friends from back home that in the summer Americans go up north camping to spend their vacation, they can't believe it because in Soviet Union in the summer you go south for your vacation. So that's why the Crimean Peninsula became the hot spot uh, for vacation for everyone from the Soviet Union. People just went down south to Crimea to spend vacation and enjoy sun and see. And Crimea was the place where the party leaders had their dachas and where the most of the health spas for the Soviet workers were built in the Crimean Peninsula. So here's the question. When in 1950 the Soviet government opened Dom Invalidov Vainy Truda, you can translate it as the house for invalids, so handicapped uh, people uh, of war and labors. Where do you think um, they picked the location for this place? If you answered Crimea, I would totally agree with you because that's the most logical location to put a health spa for the war and labor invalids and uh, handicapped people. But it's not the case. Comrade Stalin chose different location, about 1,000 miles north from Crimea, on Valam, which is archipelago in the northern portion of Lake Ladoga. It's the 61th parallel. Valam archipelago uh, had uh, quite a few abandoned uh, monasteries, Russian Orthodox monasteries, uh, that 
became abandoned after the revolution. So that's the buildings that were utilized to open the house for handicapped warriors uh, from World War II. If you ask me, that's the horrible location, but it's out of mind, out of sight, right? On an island in the middle of nowhere, up north, I mean, try to get supplies there in the winter if it's a stormy weather, but that was the whole idea to get uh, those handicapped soldiers out of the cities, out of sight, out of mind. And back in my days in the Soviet Union, I never heard of that place. It was almost like secret location, although that uh, Dom Invalidov was open for 34 years. They closed it finally in 1984 when the last veterans passed away. Only when uh, Valam Notebook, Valamskaya Tetrad uh, by Evgeny Kuznetsov was published, uh, Soviet people found out about this uh, scary, sad place. At its peak in 1959, Valam uh, Dom Invalidov had about 1,500 handicapped uh, soldiers, and now it's only just unmarked graves. No one actually tracked the people. There is no record who was there, why they died, when they died. Uh, so it's pretty sad. But it's not the worst part of the story yet. So here we need to talk about deportations, and you need to know that NKVD, the secret police of the Soviet Union under Beria, was quite efficient in deportations. For example, after Germany attacked Soviet Union in June of 1941, in September, October 1941, NKVD deported around 440,000 Germans that lived in the Soviet Union, mostly in the Volga region. So in 24 hours, they moved to Siberia, Kazakhstan, and parts of Asia. As I said, 440,000 Germans. In total, there were some Germans in other areas, around 950,000, almost a million people of German descent were deported for their places of live out to Siberia and Kazakhstan. Similar efficiency was displayed uh, during deportation of Tatar population out of Crimea in May 1820, so two days of 1944. Uh, they deported around 200,000 uh, people to Kazakhstan and Tajikistan, and later on about 30% of those people uh, perished. Also in February, March 1944, around 500,000 Chechen people were also deported. And it's all because they were cooperating with Nazi Germans, apparently. Uh, so Stalin punished the whole nation. So over uh, around 500,000 people were also deported to Siberia. Okay, so now we're back to the topic of handicapped people of the Invalid of World War II. You probably know that the Soviet Union had terrific, horrible casualties during the World War II. I personally grew up knowing the number that Soviet Union lost 20 million people during the Great Patriotic War, but the latest data says that its actual number more like 41.9 million people. 26.9 of them Red Army soldiers and officers, and the rest is civil population. So the latest data that I saw is 41.9 million lives lost at war. And of course, a lot of people got wounded, lost their limbs. So total around 2.5 million uh, people became handicapped uh, because of war. Around 450,000 of them were missing legs or arms. And they had a special like group in like group, uh, first group is like you are so uh, damaged that you have to be taken care of. You can take care of yourself. Then second uh, grade is like you can, you cannot work, but you can, you know, take care of yourself a little bit. And third grade, you can actually able to work to do some uh, labor besides uh, you still handicap, of course. So it wouldn't be a surprise uh, to know that after, right after World War II, 
1945, 1946, uh, big cities like Moscow, Kiev, Leningrad, and others were like flooded um, with handicapped people. A lot of them were missing legs or one arm or two arms. Some of them had uh, nowhere to go and some of them didn't want to go home because they realized that they'll be just extra mouth. You know, if you're missing legs and arms or just legs, there's nothing you can do in the village. You can't really work at the collective farm, but there'll be just extra uh, trouble, extra mouth to feed for its family. So they prefer to stay in the big cities where they can beg for money uh, or steal or something like that. And I can't believe this, but people actually came up with quite mean uh, words uh, for such handicapped people, the ones that are missing legs and uh, arms. Uh, one word uh, they used was abrubak, which is the same word we use, like if you take a branch and you cut little branches off, so you have just this kind of awkward stick with a little thing sticking out here and there, it's abrubak, and that's how they called uh, handicapped people that missed all four limbs. Another, I don't know if I can say, a derogatory term uh, they used was samavar, which is has really short handles to pick it up and really short legs. So that's another word they used to call uh, such a poor handicapped people, samavare. Yet another term was chimadan. So there's like traveling case. Since you have no legs, no arms, uh, you can, you know, people could pick him up by the belt and just carry him around like a chimadan, like a traveling case. Are you still with me, comrades? I'm sorry, this is long and very boring story, but we have to talk about it. So I found some uh, witness account actually from Kiev, from my hometown. Um, and the guy, he was a kid back then. Um, he was saying that around 1945, 1946, so right after war uh, was over, in Kiev, around Besarabka uh, market, that's where the peasants or collo collective farm workers would bring their goods to sell. Um, there were around 400 uh, such handicapped veterans, Abrubakov, and they would just uh, beg for money, play cards, uh, trying to you know win some money, and uh, so they were kind of like annoying because they were you know you walk by and they try to grab you by hand and say hey I lost my legs defending you why don't you give me some money or give me some food uh, so there was around 400 just in that one area and of course you know if there'll be gypsies begging for money uh, our police militia would maybe arrest them or make the move but of course uh, police felt bad they didn't want to harass veterans you know they had medals on them and uh, so they were just living there and trying to survive, you know, as I said, begging for money or uh, playing cards for money with the peasants and stuff like that. And then in May of 1946, uh, they suddenly disappeared, like almost overnight. One day there were a bunch of veterans uh, begging for money, and next day there was none. And there were just rumors that there was order from famous Marshal Zhukov uh, to clean big cities from the beggars and they snatched all the handicapped veterans and sent them somewhere no one knows where. And once again we're talking about events of the spring of 1946 and the place on Valam Island opened up in 1950, four years later. So what happened to these uh, veterans that disappeared in 1946, no one knows. I mean, there were just really scary rumors. And then there was a, a, some witness uh, who was actually um, in labor camp in Siberia on the Yenisei River. And he claims that he saw um, barges uh, going down the Yenisei River towards uh, Ahotskaya Sea. And they were packed full with uh, handicapped people. And they were only going one way and never came back. So the rumor is, and I hope it's not truth, that they uh, load up this handicapped poor guys on the barges, took them out to the sea, and they sunk the barges uh, to get rid of these handicapped people. 
And he said he saw those barges in uh, 1946, all the way to 1951. Every summer there'll be barges floating down towards the Hotska Sea and never coming back. I hope one day we'll find out the truth, but I'm really skeptical about it because still there's a tons of uh, archives that are still classified, uh, still secret about events of World War II. Uh, Russian government still doesn't want to open archives to modern historians, and a lot of documents related to the Stalin era are still classified. Uh, so it will be interesting to find out what actually happened, but this is what I managed to discover uh, here and there, and I hope it's not true. Well, that's all I have for you guys today. Uh, <laughs> can't wait to see comments. Uh, if anyone knows any information, please share in your comments. And don't forget to like this video, share with your friends. And we'll talk to you soon. До свидания. Goodbye. Hey, by the way, cool merch for cool comrades is available at the Ushanka store at teespring.com. Just a friendly reminder that my book American Diaries is available on Amazon.com or shoot me an email if you would like to have a signed copy. Thank you. And if you love my channel and would like to show your support, please click on the link below this video and become the patron of the Oshanka Show. For as little as one dollar, you can help us grow and create the new interesting videos about the life in Soviet Union.